session in the first day of the meeting. And uh, yeah, the first talk in this session is given by Professor Q and Choi talking about axioms. And uh, let's welcome him. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, many thanks for the invitation, first of all. Um, I was asked to give a talk on the uh, axioms or action and particles. So the, uh, today I'm going to talk about some theoretical ideas to widen the uh, action scales and also to generate the, uh, some uh, hierarchical structure in Lorentz action couplings. All right, this is the outline. <coughs> uh, I will start with some uh, generic features of actions and elementary stuff. Uh, actions, actually particles, and then the uh, you know introduce some uh, examples of actions which have been extensively discussed in uh, particle physics and cosmology, and finally the uh, I jump into these uh, theoretical models to widen the action field range and also to generate the uh, hierarchical structures in your action companies. All right, uh, well. I hope that many of you agree that the uh, actions or the actual particles are some of the, the best motivated candidate for physics beyond the central model particle physics. Well, uh, typically the actions uh, correspond to the uh, pseudo numbers of bosom of the simplest kind of nonlinear linear symmetry, so just a U1 symmetry, global U1 symmetry, which I will call U1PQ or simply shift symmetry. Under, under this uh, symmetry, the action experience that's just a constant shift, action field, constant shift of action field. Well, uh, at least as far as we know, the, uh, we believe that the, at least in theories, in the sense of the completion, actions are complex field, I mean periodic field. That means that at each action, there it is just associated scale, I saw it scales, mass scale f of a, which is usually called the action state constant, or simply action scale, which defines the action, the periodicity of the canonically normalized action state a. So, you know, to pi f a is the uh, period, period of the uh, canonically normalized action field a. Well, again, we believe that, okay, in theory, with the sense of the completion for each action, uh, there exists the scalar partner, law, here, whose vacuum extreme value essentially determines the action decay constant f of a. Well, uh, then we can consider the two different type of actions depending on the, uh, the physical nature of this each scalar partner. One is the, 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 you know, the very well known limited actions, for which the, essentially your action, a, appears as the phase of some complex color field. Then it's color pattern is just a uh, you know, modulus of your complex color phi. Then this is the geometry of the uh, you know, two-dimensional field space involving the extra, you know, angular direction action and radial direction color pattern. Then it's obvious that the uh, f of a, the periodicity, period of this your action, is simply determined by the value of rho, I mean the modulus part of its complex color phi. But there, there are quite different type of actions, which we might call as the string directed action, whose color partner actually describes some coupling or the uh, volume of internal space or some part of the internal space. For these string directed actions, its physical property is, I mean, the perhaps most conveniently described by the uh, uh, corresponding instant amplitude. I mean, for each string that action, there exist corresponding instantons, which coupled to the action. So in that sense, the f of a, which was defined as the periodicity of the action field, also determines the, the coupling to these instantons. So this is instant amplitude, the action, action dependent instant amplitude, suppressed by this exponential of the uh, Euclidean action of the instanton. So again, in this case, the, this instant action, which is determined by the vacuum value of scalar partner, in, in, in some cases corresponds to the inverse power of some couplings, or the volume of the internal space. For the string theoretic axioms, it turns out that each k constant, or each periodicity, best described in the unit of this combination, the Planck scale, divided by the Euclidean action of the corresponding instant with some model-dependent coefficient C here. So we learned that the, uh, 
and the list in simple relatively simple compactification, compactification which does not involve a suppression much smaller than the inverse of the Kleinian action. In that case, we learned that this coefficient c is generically over the one. Of course, still it can depend on some generic moduli of the underlying compactification. But in other cases, in the more complicated compactification may involve some large or small factors due to the, let's say, huge volume, huge compaction volume, or some <coughs> exponential sum work factor, much smaller than the inverse of the uh, this Euclidean action. In that case, you can have this coefficient C much smaller than the one. In any case, there is actually one uh, feature which critically distinguishes this strict action from the previous field, sorry, previous field set case. For the case of field set actions, you can consider the, some particular field point which gives the uh, vanishing action, the constant action periodicity. So if f is then becomes general, then the essentially at that particular point, action lose its, its identity. So this uh, point of vanishing f of a, this is very simple, just the vanishing the origin of this uh, complex scalar field. So you know that uh, certainly this f of f a equals zero it corresponds to the point which allows the uh, for the effective field theory descriptions. But for the string theory action case, if you consider the uh, limit where the action the constant goes zero, then you find that actually it's, it locates at infinite distance. So that in this case, people say that you know if the string theory has some kind of some kind of conjecture which states that the, at infinite field distance you will have infinite number of exponential light state so that you lose the, uh, I mean, that situation you cannot describe it with the uh, sensible uh, effectivity. So that in that sense, the, for the string theory axioms, the vanishing f of a does not allow the uh, for the effective field descriptions. That's a kind of convention we we now have. Well, there are at least two more or less model independent uh, string theory axioms which are associated with the string dilaton and also over the volume modulus. In that case, at least the, uh, in the weak coupling limit or in the large, you know, large volume limit, you can explicitly calculate the actual decay constant and then you found that the coefficient C here is actually the uh, modulus, modular independent constant which has the uh, oh, you know, value of order one. All right, now, why this uh, action decay constant is important? The main reason is that the, uh, much of the uh, low energy action physics is determined by this uh, single parameter f of a. For instance, uh, this whole previous uh, discussion suggests that the uh, action appears in most cases through this angular field combination, a over f of a. So that means that whenever we have a, we have f of a in the denominator. So that means that you know that all action couplings and those even action mass are inversely proportional to the one of the FA. Sorry, inversely proportional to the F of A. So if you write down the low energy effect program, then of course at low energy scales, well below F of A, we have of course the most interesting action coupling to the standard model degree freedoms. So you have action kinetic terms and predictive coupling of action to the uh, sum current made of the standard model degree of freedom, like the uh, Fermion current and Higgs current. So of course, uh, because this, this derivative coupling is invariant under this u one kq symmetry, which is identified as just a simple constant shift of reaction field. But of course, because this shift symmetry or u one kq symmetry is not only exact symmetry, you can have extra interactions which violate this uh, shift symmetry. So you can have integrating non-derivative couplings of actions for instance, in a simple you know, potentials, including the mass, of course, and those actual coupling to this gate field. In some cases, you can have the actual coupling hits also, which violates the, uh, the shift symmetry. The reason that the, uh, we are interested in action is interesting is that it can be naturalized because of this uh, approximate you know, UN peak symmetry. In particular, quite often the, we learned that action masses are generated by non of defects. For instance, some instantons which are exponentially suppressed, or of course in the semi 
So the classical limit that the instantaneous action becomes large. On the other hand, for this action field weight, we have some intriguing kind of upper bound on the action field range, or f of a, which is from the uh, weak conjectures. So the weak conjecture states that the, you know, if you consider action with the field range f of a, or 2 pi of f of a, defined at the scale of quantum gravity, then there again there should exist an instanton according to this weak conjecture. There exists an instanton which couples to a, so that, you know, those instantons can generate the actual mass. But uh, you have this kind of inequality. I mean, the, as I mentioned, f of a defines the periodicity of the action field, but also determines the coupling strengths between action and corresponding instantons. So that this action is coupling, or of f a, according to the great conjecture, should be stronger than the uh, instant of gravity couplings, which is determined by the instant connection by the M Planck. So this is a you know, kind of conjecture based on the uh, you know, certain physics that I'm not going to discuss here. So according, if we just simply take this inequality, that means that you know, this, this tells that the field range of light actions defined at the scale of quantum gravity is bounded by this combination. So then, the, we, once you use this kind of you know, correspondence between action mass and the instant connection, then your f of a is bounded by m Planck divided by log of the you know, action mass, of course, uh, with some model dependent equation of order of the unity. So, this is the consequence of the weak uh, conjecture. So far, we think that the all known strict actions obey the, uh, this effect conjecture bound on the uh, action field rate. However, I would like, I wish to stress that the, uh, you know, we need to be a bit more careful when we try to apply this weak conjecture bound on the action field constant to low energy physics. The reason is that in this, uh, sorry, weak conjecture involves the uh, action field range, which depends on the uh, how you define the field distance. And also, it involves the uh, some features of the instanton, which cups the action. So that means that you know, the implication of the infinite conjecture bound depends also on the uh, what's the dynamical law of the instantons, which was suggested by these infinite conjectures. On the other hand, in if it, for instance, if you consider models with multiple actions, the field distance in low energy vector theory can dramatically differ from the distance in the underlying unit theory. As a simple example, you may consider the theory with two actions and consider field distance from P and Q here. Then in the full theory involving both actions, the geodesic distance uniquely is simpler, just uh, just uh, you know. Okay, this is the fundamental domain of this for us. The distance from P and Q just provide this black straight line in the underlying full theory. But let's suppose that the, you know, one of the action combination got heavy mass and iterate out. Now then, you are left with only one single light action. Then you just consider the knowledge gap theory of that single light action, which is which actually the light action describes this red line under this two-dimensional field manifold. So now you have you can consider low energy theory of light action combination described in these red directions. Then if you consider field distance in low energy theory of the single actions, then it should along this red line so that the distance from P and Q is provided by these dotted blue lines. So in that sense, the, the, the concept of field distance or geodesic field distance depends on at which scale we are talking, you are interested in the uh, you know, your physics. Yeah. Also, I think this point was expressed by Gary Chu some years ago, that the dynamical law of the instanton suggests by the grid conjecture is also quite model dependent. In principle, those instances, in some case, can be the dominant source of the action potential or action mass, 
But in some other cases, they may provide just small corrections to action maps. So depending upon the situation, the digital implication of this Euclid conjecture bound on the uh, action field rate uh, can be deeper. Okay. Now, let me move to the uh, some examples actions extensively discussed in, in particle physics and cosmology. Well, the QC actions, this is the uh, first example action, and this is the action first introduced, and the, the first action introduced in particle physics, even in general physics, and to solve the strong city problem, but still the, the best, I think, the best motivated you know, ones. Well, the key feature of the QC action is that you know, the, the peak symmetry is dominantly broken by its coupling to the blue ones. That means that you know this, the, you, you, identify, you, you make an assumption on the origin of the action mass, origin of the action potentials, because this is the uh, dominant source of the peak breaking. Then you can analytically calculate the action potential, and you find that in this case, when your peak symmetry is dominantly broken by the Kishu anomaly, that, that is equivalent to that action vacuum value actually corresponds to the Kishu vacuum angle. Then the you know this is basically again kind of cosmological solution to strong city problem. So you know whatever value, whatever initial value of action you, you begin with, once you have this action potential, eventually your action field will be settled down at the minimum of the potential, which gives the uh, you know city conserving QCD. So that's the way that the, you know the, the strong city problem is solved. Well. Recently, the uh, quite different kind of action that did was proposed by, you know, David and his collaborators, the reductions. Well, there can be some uh, several different versions of the uh, reductions, I mean, the, which share the uh, key features, but uh, di different in some details, in particular in, in the mechanism to stop the reduction motions. In any case, the idea is pretty simple. I mean, you have some uh, action like field, which experience a long excursion along the uh, its field range, and then uh, this uh, this uh, cosmological excursion of relaxation because your Higgs mass depends on relaxation, so that this cosmological relaxation excursion of relaxation will change the Higgs mass from a large initial value comparable to the cut-off scale down to some small value, but then eventually you need to stop this relaxation motion at the right position. This is actually the most non trivial part of, one of the non trivial piece of the whole scheme. But it depends, but in any case, I would like to point out that the, okay, the, to stop the relaxation motions, you need some additional coupling of relaxation to something, for instance, to Higgs or some uh, gauge field, whatever it is. The point is that the, that coupling, that, that relaxation coupling that you need to stop relaxation motion should be much, much stronger than the inverse of the uh, relaxation field range. That's what all is you need. So you need a kind of generic relaxation models. You need a kind of hierarchical patterns of relaxation couplings. I mean, you know, in particular, the, uh, you need relaxation coupling to something which is much, much stronger than the inverse of the relaxation field range. Well, Action like field provides also the uh, quite attractive candidate for the large field inflation, so called natural inflation. In that case, you, know, you need you know, long, I mean, the relatively long period of the slow roll of the platform, which requires eventually the uh, your, 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 you know, action field weight, super plank, yeah? I mean, the M plank times scale root of the number of evolving that you need. So, this is actually kind of you know, pitch of natural inflation, uh, which caused many hot discussions on the uh, whether or not this theory can have a successful unit completion. Because obviously, this is in conflict with the liquid conjecture bound that I have just mentioned. I, I've mentioned before. Well, also action, you know, can provide compelling candidate for dark matter, and also action also can be a good candidate for the dark energy. So for kin tensors actions, for the kin tensors actions again. Uh, you know, because you need the slow rolling of this, you know, dark energy axiom, quintessence axiom, over the whole time period. That actually again requires the, uh, you know, the action field rates, at least comparable to the Planck scale. More precise, more, more detailed analysis suggests that you need the action field constant for the quintessence axiom, at least 
bigger than half of the time scale. All right, so I mean, if you look at the uh, look back some of the actions extensively discussed in this hypothetical cosmology, then you found that some some of those actions require the uh, hierarchical structures in the involved parameters. I already mentioned it's one of those you know hierarchical structure in the relation models. As I mentioned, some actions introduced in hypothetical cosmology require intriguing hybrid pattern of complex scales. So for if you take this Euclid conjecture bound seriously, then somehow it suggests at least that at the scale of quantum gravity, all the actions should have a decay constant lower than Euclid conjecture bound, and M Planck divided by the instant actions. On the other hand, some of the actions are required to have uh, Big range, well above the Euclidean conjecture bound. That was the, 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 the most prominent example was the inflation and natural inflation, which required this super Planckian in action field range. If you compare the required action field range with Euclidean conjecture bound, then you see numerically about you know factor of hundred factors here. For the quintessence action, again similar. I mean, you know, the here the this factor 100 you know, ratio between required action field range and Euclid conjecture bound is largely from the uh, log of the uh, quintessence action mass, 10 to minus 30 to 10 to 30 selection board. Also, for some particular, for some version of reaction models require really you know, high for super Planckian reaction field range, like uh, it's not case much bigger than 10 to 23 GeV. So these are, you know, the, these examples require Action field range well above the Euclidean conjecture bound. So the natural question is that you know how to generate such uh, effective action field range much bigger than the Euclidean conjecture bound. Okay? That's one question. Well, there are also some other kind of actions, although uh, which require the uh, some hierarchical patterns of the couplings. Well, for this we may consider three. Different kind, different couplings of actions: action coupling to photons, action coupling to gluons, and also the action coupling to Higgs bosons, H squared, Higgs mass, with the uh, action field carriers f of a. Well, typical action models predict that the action photon coupling is given by one of the uh, field rays f of a with some loop operation factors involving the electric coupling E squared. Same for the action below coupling of in one of FA with extra loop factors involving the color, the, uh, the color couplings. For the action coupling Higgs with F of H here, again, you know, typical action models suggest or predict that those two, I mean, this F of H also should be compared to the action field in F of A. However, we already learned that in some, okay, although I didn't explain I didn't mention this kind of you know, actions. There actually be uh, some uh, you know actions in the dissipative action inflation model, and also the actions in models with the uh, magnetogenesis scenario. They actually require the action photon coupling is much much bigger than the uh, one of F of L. While the typical action model predicts that the uh, this action photon coupling is suppressed you know, about 10 to minus 3 numerically relative to the order of F of L. I, I already mentioned you know, uh, the, this particular hierarchical pattern of action couplings in relaxation models. And also, there is actually very interesting type of QC action models, which may be particularly interesting in view of the uh, new ideas to probe the, uh, the, you know, the actions in, in the laboratory experiment, so-called photophilic QC actions. Which means that you know it has the action photon coupling much stronger than the action gluon couplings. Just let me you know mention that the, all these kind of patterns of the action couplings are stable against radiant correction, so that at least they are technically natural. Well, this is this plus shows the uh, situation of photophilic actions. So this is uh, you know this plane represents action mass and action photon coupling. So that this brown band 
represents the, the case for typical Cauchy reactions for which the action photon coupling is numerically about 10 to the minus 2 times action gluon coupling uh, at the, around the QCD scale. But uh, there have been some new proposals, new ideas, which allow the uh, you know, action uh, laboratory such experiment for the, for instance, you know, which allows the, this experimental probe of these parameter regions well above the, uh, this uh, QCD action band, that means that action for, for given action mass you know that for the QCD actions, the uh, action mass, by definition, action mass is essentially determined by action gluon coupling, so that there is a unique correspondence between action mass and action for the action gluon coupling for the QCD action. So that the heavier action means that you know the stronger action coupling to gluons. So this parameter region means that you know action photon coupling for given value of action mass, that means for given value of action gluon coupling, you can have a stronger action photon couplings. So that's what the uh, photophilic uh, QCD action means. So the interesting thing is that, that those parameter regions can be probed in some future by the new ideas, uh, particularly the abracadabra experiment or the cast experiment. So that's why this uh, you know, new kind of QCD action models which can give the action photon coupling much stronger than action gluon coupling is uh, becomes quite interesting. All right, all those kind of you know issues, I and mean, in particular the, the some exact, some action <laughs> which require the uh, hierarchical patterns of the uh, action couplings, all require the action field range much bigger than the equivalent quantity bound. They actually motivate some uh, dynamic mechanism to enlarge the action field range and or also to generate the higher pattern formation couplings. Uh, there can be several, you know, theoretical mechanisms to achieve this kind of job. But uh, here just let me, you know, focus because my time is limited. Let me focus just one single example, club mechanism uh, proposed by you know, David and also uh, myself some time ago. So the club mechanism can uh, enlarge the action field rate exponentially. That's the one key feature. And also, at the same time, can generate the exponential hierarchy among the action couplings. So for this, uh, you, you, you can consider you know, the theory space, this critical space, with N side, and introduce the N axiom. To be specific, maybe you can introduce the N complex kind of field, whose pages can be identified as some axioms, affiliated axioms which decay constant determined by its modulus, vacuum value. So just for simplest, you may assume that all this complex by K has the you know, common vacuum value F. Now you introduce this kind of you know, interaction between nearby, just you know, nearby the complex kind of field, which provides this, um, this you know, clog of gear networks. So, okay, you have N axioms, but you, can, you have here only one n plus, so n minus interaction, so that you have one action masses, which describe the uh, collective rotation of this series of clock gears. In any case, these series of potentials, or these clock you know, gear structures, provide the uh, kind of constant, provide the relation between the nearby actions, I mean, which is, which needs to be satisfied to stay at the minimum of the potential. So that you know, Sarah, this is simply that once you make the uh, you know single rotation of the first wheel, the next wheel uh, will have n one times n one rotations, uh, blah, blah blah, and so on, so on. So that uh, this whole structure with this whole structure, once you make a single full rotation of the first wheel, that will eventually make the exponential main, you know, rotation of the rest. Wheel. But you know that the. Uh, Again, the, you, know, you, you have one single light action, massless action in this case, describe the collective rotation of the, uh, this whole system. Then you know, this field range of this uh, massless action, describing the collective rotation of this uh, network of global gears, is just a uh, you know, field range that the, uh, the range that you come back to the, uh, the precisely same original configurations. But this, uh, to come back to the uh, you know, the same configuration of the first field, you, you have these exponentially many rotations last field. That means that the, the field range of this mass section is exponentially enough. You can make a more concrete calculation of the field range, and you found that the, 
it's actually the field very is enhanced by this multiple of these exponential, you know, multiple exponential large in integer factors. While also at the same time this kind of you know, constraint realize the uh, a kind of localization of this mass section in the discretion space. So if it, I mean for instance the, uh, the, the, the this kind of constant relation automatically tells that you know if you express the each action in terms of the, uh, the mass section A, then the, this mass section is uh, mostly localized at the, at the right end, exponentially localized. So this realized the you know, kind of exponential localization of the uh, you know, light action in the discretion space. So that allows that the you know, kind of exponential hierarchy between the, uh, uh, you know, the different couplings of these light actions because the light actions are localized in, in this particular space. For instance, uh, you know, you may couple the uh, your action, light action uh, to the blue one through the uh, zeta one. And also couple to the, uh, this light section to the photon and through, uh, photon and Higgs photon to zeta n. Now, because the, your light action is exponentially localized in this field space, that automatically realizes that the exponential hierarchy between the, uh, the light action coupling to photon and Higgs and light action coupling to the blue ones. Then you may say this, is, this looks quite similar to the uh, kind of localization in the uh, theory of extra dimension. But there's a key difference here. The reason is that the, you know, the actions are periodic pairs, and here we are talking about the, uh, for instance, we are interested in the non-derivative coupling action, non-derivative coupling action to the gauge bosons, and those in this case non-derivative coupling action to Higgs bosons. So because the actions are periodic pairs, all those non-derivative coupling should be properly quantized. So actually, what you need to generate exponential hierarchy between those quantized non-derivative couplings of actions, we need the exponentially large integers, not just exponentially large conscious numbers or exponentially small conscious numbers. So this kind, you know, this, uh, you know, getting a large integer function, you can never get such a kind of things from the uh, lo through the localization extra dimension. So this is the kind of unique feature of the Clark models. Okay, now let me conclude. The studies of various issues in particle physics and cosmology suggest that the, there may exist multiple light actions having very different field range and also very different masses. Some actions require hierarchical pattern of couplings and scales, which is difficult to be achieved in convention action models. This motivates mechanism to widen the action field range and also you know, generate this um, hierarchy among the different couplings of the light actions, in particular the uh, hierarchical structure in action photon coupling, action gluon coupling, action coupling to Higgs bosons, and the hierarchical, hierarchical ratio between the action field range and the weakly temperature bound. The Clarkson mechanism can generate an exponentially large integer equation, which can result in an exponential in large field range and also exponential hierarchy among the quantized coupling of the action. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, uh, no, nice talk. So you are able to widen the couplings uh, uh, and the uh, 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 couplings. Uh, but do you have some favorite range to suggest to experiment to looking for? I mean, why the range? Then it, it is no prediction. Then what, what do we do uh, for experimenting? Okay, yeah. I'm very sorry about the situations. Uh, okay, first of all, the, in my talk, the, uh, I was focusing on kind of parametric behavior, parametric structures, first of all. For instance, the, you know, why you need, you know, uh, how to get the uh, action field rate parametrically bigger than we could the conjecture bound, and those how you get the, uh, let's say, action photon coupling parametrically stronger than the uh, action gluon couplings. Of course, the, you know, the, the, the difficult of this whole issue is that the, you know, uh, we don't have any uh, good uh, physical reason to pin down the particular range. 
That's the because I guess that's the because we have uh, this symmetry, right, along the uh, constant uh, shift symmetry, right? That means that physics is approximately independent of the you know uh, shift of the axions, and also the uh, this is about the uh, the you know uh, action coupling is proportional to inverse is proportional to f of a, so that the once you make the uh, effort bigger after big, then you can make the action coupling after light. So in that sense, uh, I mean, nuclear conjecture is interesting because it gives a kind of upper bound, right? Mm -hmm. And the, uh, but again, you know, the upper bound is near the Planck scale, so that uh, you just compare the action coupling with the gravity, right? So for the particle physics, this is not, not that much useful. So the, you know, uh, Again, the same, right? The hierarchy problem came down the scale near the weak scale. That, that was the uh, key feature of the, this whole argument from the hierarchy problem, which can, can pin down at the scale. But uh, I think uh, usually we don't have, unfortunately, such kind of situation, happy situation in uh, many of the BSM physics. Yeah, that's an unfortunate situation, yes. Okay. Further questions for speaker? Uh, in the Fogwell framework, um, like uh, each step is change sign, right? And yes. uh, if you interpret it as the as like a uh, natural dimension curve, class name, is such change of alternating alternating sign of phase, would it be a problem or is okay? I think, okay, my answer is that no problem. Okay. But I, I, I cannot remember, how can I explain why no problem? But absolutely no problem. The sign is irrelevant. I, not irrelevant. Okay, sign is not important at all, yes. Okay. 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 okay, so I don't see further questions. Let's thank Q&A.